Hello, this is the Big Data Applications and Analytics course. This is a motivation covering um, essentially the whole course, giving you a hint of what we're going to discuss and explaining why it's all a pretty important idea and how these ideas of big data and cloud computing are centerpieces of the future economy. I'm Jeffrey Fox, and we're at the School of Informatics and Computing in Bloomington, Indiana. Uh, in this first lesson, we're going to give a broad introduction to these ideas. Here we have the abstract of the whole um, talk, which points out that the motivation is the so-called data deluge, the endlessly growing amount of data. We're up to eight zettabytes in 2015, and this uh, records every transaction there is between people and the environment, whether we're shopping or at a social networking site. Well, smartphones and smart homes and ubiquitous cities and spa grids and intelligent vehicles are full of sensors. They're going to be up to 75 billion of them by um, 2020, and they're recording even more data. Meanwhile, good old science with satellites and accelerators is giving data on the transactions between particles and photons at the microscopic scale. These data are and will be stored in the future in immense clouds with co-located storage and computing. And those perform analytics deriving information and insight from the data. They transform data into information and then to wisdom and knowledge and decisions. Data mining finds the proverbial knowledge diamonds in the data rough. This is what we're trying to teach you about what to do, and this is a huge field. So we're just going to give you some uh, tools to march forward in a more precise fashion. This is clearly a disruptive technology, and it's tr the transformations from it are driving the economy and creating millions of jobs in this area of data science. We discussed the revolution and its implications for you, universities, and society. Well, we've already mentioned these, some of these trends. The data deluge is a key trend from commercial, community, and scientific applications. On the hardware side, we have smaller chips. Those chips drive multi-core. The fact that servers are getting more powerful, not by running faster, by just having lots of cores, each able to do parallel processing. That parallel processing corresponds to parallel data analysis and powerful analytics. Meanwhile, the actual clients are also a lightweight, because they're going from PCs whose sales are falling, to smartphones and tablets and even sensors. Clouds are getting the preferred way to do computing, because they are cheaper, greener, and easier to use. And so they may lack things today in various specialized areas like high performance computing, but in general, they're providing the most attractive computing available. All of this has new jobs. Those new jobs are associated with new curricula, such as cloud computing curricula, or are new areas like data science, which is what this particular course is focused on. Here we have a famous chart which Gartner produces every year. It's the so-called hype cycle. Let's look at this hype cycle. It, it um, starts here, then we have the uh, Goes up this this um, hill, gets to the uh, uh, height of uh, overinflated uh, peak of inflated expectations. It dashes down here to this uh, trough of disillusionment, and then it comes along up here as it gradually gets adopted and gets mature, and uh, we go into the plateau of productivity through the slope of enlightenment. This is a these are ideas from Gartner, not from me. What I've indicated by arrows are some of the things that are relevant to this course. Uh, we have big data up here. It's still climbing the, in 2012, it's climbing the, uh, uh, the technology um, expectation hill. Uh, in, uh, we will see uh, the 2013 one comes along in the next slide. Here we have re related ideas, in-memory analytics, cloud computing, in-memory database management systems, private clouds, and predictive analytics. These are all ideas, and there's actually text analytics next to in-memory analytics here. So these are all ideas that uh, 
related strongly to this course. And as I've said, things like mobile robots and Internet of Things are also very relevant to this course. And indeed, will be covered in this course as applications. Um, here we note that, uh, that 2012 was um, had 48 technologies listed, which was the highest in the last 10 years. There were 27 in 2008, the lowest. And Gartner points out that uh, we're now at a pretty interesting moment where a lot of the things that have been planned for a while are now coming into reality. Here's the 2013 case, and we have here um, big data has now reached this top of the peak of inflated expectations. You're starting to see articles saying big data is over, overhyped and we don't believe it. Um, we have the same type of in-memory data, well, we have exactly the same entry, in-memory database management system. Cloud computing is coming down here. It will obviously get through the trough of disillusionment, not everything does, and start charging up the slope of enlightenment. Predictive analytics has moved a bit further along as has in-memory analytics. Um, I think text analytics does not appear to enter it this year. So if you look at Gartner's um, 2013 uh, presentation, they divide their enabling technologies into three areas. Machines understanding humans and the environment. That's what sort of robots do. Humans understanding machines, and machines and humans just becoming much smarter, possibly by working together. And the areas in this class are largely in the area of machines and humans becoming smarter. And of course, they're becoming faster. And they have these driving technology areas, so quantum computing, analytics, neuro business, big data, event processing, that's all to do with, that's all done in clouds. In memory databases, cloud computing, in memory analytics, and predictive analytics. So these are very, all very top, apart from the quantum computing and neuro business, these are effectively topics covered in this class. Gardner also produces every year the so-called priority matrix, which is pretty interesting. Uh, they actually take technologies and label them by years to adoption. That's for them to get onto that plateau. And also the benefit. So all sorts of areas of analytics are very important. They're either transformational or of high, high benefit. And then in the more than 10 years, we have the Internet of Things, which are these incredible number of Small devices, which are connected, or if, just if they are the Internet of Things, whether these things, these are the things connected to the Internet. As I said they're currently increasing 31% per year, and they're heading for 75 billion by 2020. So after this sort of exciting side of um, pipe-like issues, let's sort of discuss the types of issues we need to discuss in this motivation. We have the economic imperative, that there's a lot of data, and that data is associated with a lot of jobs. There is the computing model, that industry has adopted clouds, and that clouds are very important and attractive for data analytics. We have the research model, uh, where there are now four paradigms of research. Um, Theory, observational experiment, com computing, computational science, which is simulation. That was the third paradigm introduced around 20 years ago. And uh, the fourth paradigm is data-driven science, so the, or data-driven research. Well, the data drives the research questions. Um, so we have lots of opportunities in advancing computing technology and their algorithms, and lots of opportunities in what I call ex-informatics, a rather unpopular term, which means applying these technologies in actual area, you know, application areas. And then the final issue of importance uh, uh, is the actual development of data science education, which is, of course, what this course is part of. But it's also, we will make some general remarks about this, uh, this, th this uh, aspect in this, in this talk. And now we move on to the next uh, lesson, which is the actual data deluge in detail. And we're pleased to uh, continue these exciting comments. Thank you very much.